Good morning everyone and welcome to today's online service from Margate Baptist Church. I'm going to actually go down to the church in a few minutes to lead the rest of our service from there so that you can see that it still exists. But first we're going to start with Psalm 100 and I'd like to invite you to share with me in reading this psalm the words will appear on your screen. Please share with me as we say together Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Now shall we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for inviting us to come and worship you today. We bring our praise and thankfulness for all that you've done for us. Be with us in these shared moments and help us to be open to your presence and your Holy Spirit's leading. In Jesus' name, Amen. One of the real blessings of this past year has been the way in which so many churches have uh, shared their resources so that other churches can use them in their online services. It's certainly given me a sense of belonging to a much wider and richer Christian family and of being part of a rich community, not just Baptist, but of Christians of all backgrounds. In a moment, we're going to hear once again from Zoe James, who's a Christian youth worker based at Saltash Baptist Church in Cornwall. She's got a really good message for us all. But first we're going to sing a worship song led by our friends from Queen's Road Baptist Church in Broadstairs. You might just recognise Tim playing the guitar. Tim was a member of our Boys Brigade company for many years. The song is I Stand Amazed in the Presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Sing this love for me 
you to follow him, what would you say? Follow me. Sorry, I've just got to dry my hair. Follow me. Sorry, I just need to eat my snacks. Follow me. Sorry, I've got to go to school. Follow me. Sorry, I just have to call someone. Hey, follow me. Sorry, I just have to finish this game. Follow me. Sorry, I'm just going swimming. Follow <sighs> me. Sorry, I need to go to bed. Follow me. Sorry, I need to do the ironing. Follow me. Sorry, I need to do the cooking. Now, you may not be this rude to Jesus if you are talking to him. But sometimes as Christians, we can be like this. Following Jesus should be of the highest priority above everything else. Things like family and friends and school and food are of all very, very high importance. But deciding to follow Jesus is of immediate importance. But sometimes it's easy to forget the importance and the urgency of following Jesus. So we should remember to pray to God every day that we can follow him through the good times and the bad times. Let's pray now. Dear God, help us not to put off following you. Please help us to put you first and keep you in the centre of our lives. Help us to do this every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Many thanks to Zoe for that message. Now we're going to have our Bible reading this morning, which is from Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And then verse 13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbour as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. We give thanks for God's word. The week before last, I attended the Regional Minister's Conference for the Southeastern Baptist Association. Normally it's held at the lovely Ashburnham Place in East Sussex. But this year, sadly, it had to be on Zoom, which is not quite the same. But better than nothing. There were about 60 or 70 other ministers at the conference, including our own Julie Aylward. And one of this year's speakers was Anthony Cottrell, who is the territorial commander of the Salvation Army. In other words, the leading Salvation Army officer in the UK. Now, it just so happens that I was at university with Anthony in the 1970s, when we were both students at St David's University College in Lampeter in Mid Wales. I was studying theology and Anthony was studying for a degree in geography in order to become a geography teacher, which he eventually did. Although we were studying different subjects, we were both involved in the Christian Union, which for a small university was quite large and lively. I became the leader of the Christian Union there in 1976 and Anthony followed me as leader in 1977. We were good friends at the time as part of a, a large group of young Christians many of whom went on to, became, to become Christian leaders in different fields. I wish I could say that we'd stayed as friends all through the years, but as so often happens, we lost touch. And I last saw Anthony in 1978 when we graduated. I went on to train for the ministry in Oxford and then to pastorates in London and Essex and now Kent. Anthony became a geography teacher for some years and then a Salvation Army officer in Scotland, and Birmingham and Hemel Hempstead. 
He was then appointed as divisional leader for the South East, and in 2012 he became the principal of the William Booth College. Three years ago he took up his present post as territorial commander. When Anthony saw my name on the conference list, he made contact with me and we have since renewed our friendship after 43 years. It was great to remember some of the old days that we had shared together and I was certainly impressed with Anthony's message at the conference. I thought you might like Mike to see and hear from Anthony as well. So here he is sharing a reflection last week on the subject of freedom. Greetings. Over the last few weeks, there's been great hope as the vaccinations across the United Kingdom have begun to be rolled out. And in the last few days, there's been another outburst of optimism following the Prime Minister's announcements uh, here in England uh, with respect to the roadmap out of the pandemic, as it is seen from Westminster. And I'm sure that those roadmaps are going to be paralleled by the other governments uh, across the territory. Following the announcement, the newspapers the following days were shouting freedom at us. Um, the independent, the I declares four steps to freedom. 118 days until freedom was the Daily Telegraph's headline, while the Daily Express echoed the Prime Minister's words speaking of a one-way road to freedom. Last Sunday afternoon, Jill and I had our own roadmap uh, to freedom. As most of you will know or remember, uh, we live right in the centre of London and we walk the streets of London. There's nowhere else to go. And as we do so, we come across lots of different exciting things. We found ourselves in a part of the city that we'd never really explored uh, before. We found ourselves next to the famous Smithfields Meat Market and taking a rest uh, in a, a little park area that uh, is right opposite Smithfields, uh, we sat down and we took our, our rest. Um, as you might expect, as Anthony is a, a geography student and a former geography teacher, I needed to look at a map to see where we were and to see what way we might go back home. Maps are, are great. They're great for helping us find our way but they also let you know what's going on. The old ordnance survey maps are brilliant for this if you know how to read the signs, the symbols and the lines. It's not such a problem with Google Maps, I have to tell you. And as you enlarge the map on uh, a Google Map on your iPhone or otherwise, um, various places of interest become spelt out for us actually in much more detail than the paper maps could ever do. So as we sat down in the park, looking on my iPhone, um, I saw to my great surprise, as perhaps you can now see on the screen, um, that right behind us was a memorial, a memorial, unexpectedly to us, to William Wallace. Now, William Wallace will be well known to those who hail from Scotland, but to others, from other parts of the UK and perhaps from other parts of the world might wonder who William Wallace is. He's a great Scottish patriot who stood up against the English and against King Edward I in particular in the late 1200s. A great Scottish hero who sadly was betrayed and then brutally executed in 1305, just a few metres away from where Jill and I stood looking at the memorial in Smithfields. His story is highlighted by that remarkable film, Braveheart. It's one of my favorite films. I think it's the Scottish blood in me. And in Braveheart, we have one of the most rousing, inspirational speeches of history. I'm not really sure that William Wallace said any of the words, but Mel Gibson certainly did in the film. If you Google Braveheart freedom speech, it's well worth listening to. William Wallace pitches up on his horse to inspire the gathered clans who were forming a, actually a much smaller army, a Scots army against the English forces. And his speech culminates with these words, they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. And those of you who know the film 
will know just how powerful that is, but also the very last words of the film where, as William Wallace draws his last breath, just about to be executed, just in Smithfield, just nearby where we were standing, he cries out, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson freedom. The truth is that as I stood there with Jill at the William Wallace Memorial, I realized again that freedom is not simply being free to do what I or anybody else wants to do. It is far more than that. Being free to become and be who we were designed to be is truly liberating. It's why in visits to prisons, I have talked with prisoners who, despite being locked up, they have been able to tell me that they've never felt so free because in their captivity, they've come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's why conversely, I've met people, especially Christian people, who seem to have everything as far as freedom and freedom of choice are concerned but they're people who long one day that they might be free from darkness or from burdens that press down upon them or within them, seemingly free, but actually back in captivity. It's great that there's a, a roadmap towards freedom. I can't wait for it, I'm sure you can't either, as cautiously yet boldly we head towards the future. But wouldn't it be sad that if any of us were to arrive at our future later in the year to so-called freedom, but we find that we're still chained, still snared by any number of things from our past or present, things that are held over us by other people, sting of old regrets, sin that has tangled us up. The Bible, as you well know, I'm sure, has a roadmap for freedom for us. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, John says these great words. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's as if we can go free. Lewis Edgar Jones in Song 451 says, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or victory or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Come then for cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There's another marker along that road to freedom in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1 where Paul says it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If that sounds familiar it may be because of a song that John Gibson wrote it was for freedom that Christ has set us free, no longer to be subject to a yoke of slavery. So we're rejoicing in God's victory, our hearts responding to his love. Jesus, we celebrate your victory. Jesus, we revel in your love. Jesus, we rejoice, you've set us free. Jesus, your death has brought us life. We must be patient, we must be vigilant as we move towards freedom later in the year. But if we're not experiencing freedom now in the deepest and fullest sense, if you're not experiencing that within your spirit now, it's not going to come to you as a result of the Prime Minister's or anybody else's roadmap. It'll be yours, it'll be mine because of the Lord's roadmap, the one who said, come to me, the one who said, I am the way, I'm the road the truth and the life. The one who said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. The good news is that's you 
and it's me. It's a gift to us that we might be free. And I hope and pray that you'll receive that gift afresh, even today as we journey through this season of Lent along a road, the road that Christ has opened up for us, a road to Calvary and a road to freedom. Oh, may you receive it and may you rejoice in it and give him all the glory and praise as we live our lives out for him in these days and in the days that are to come. God bless. I'm well, very grateful to Anthony for sharing that reflection with us. It just underlines for me how during this pandemic, God has opened up all sorts of opportunities for sharing and cooperation within the wider church. Shall we now pray? Father God, we thank you for friendships old and new, and we thank you for the partnership we have in the gospel with our friends from other denominations. While we value our own Baptist identity, we also recognise that we are just a small part of your great kingdom, which is rich in its diversity and inclusiveness. We pray for Anthony Cottrell and his wife Jill in their national responsibilities. And particularly at this testing time, we pray that you will give them wisdom, grace and patience to lead their people well. We pray for our fellow Christians in the other local churches here in Margate. As we each find our way through this current pandemic, give special wisdom and inspiration to those who lead the churches, to those who plan for the future, to those who oversee the care and provision for all who are in need in our local community. We give thanks for the winter shelter scheme and for the food banks and for all the ways in which help is being offered to those who need it the most. We pray for our world. We pray food for the hungry, medicines and care for the unwell, comfort for the bereaved, guidance for the lost and hope for all the oppressed. We pray safety for the threatened and the fearful and light for all who live in darkness. We pray for our nation, for our government, for the health service, for all who care and nurse and serve, for the unemployed and for those who are anxious about the future. We pray for our church fellowship as we begin to plan for the possibility of a return to meeting in person and worshipping in church once again. Guide us in the right ways, we pray. Help us not to look backwards to what used to be, but forwards to what you would have us be in the days ahead. We pray for those in our fellowship who are lonely or sad, fearful or anxious, weary or burdened, especially those with mental health issues. May we not wait until the pandemic is over to show compassion and love to one another, but reach out now in your grace. And finally, we pray for ourselves and for our loved ones. As we journey through Lent, may we grow ever closer to you in our daily walk. And may our faith be deepened and our courage renewed. Keep us safe, we pray, and watch over those we love day by day. We bring all our prayers in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing song this morning has been shared by Croxley Green Baptist Church. And if you look carefully, you might just see the familiar face of Rachel Mead amongst their worship group. Rachel grew up here at Margate Baptist Church, was baptised and married here, and she now lives and worships at Croxley Green. And the song is, What a Beautiful Name It Is, The Name of Jesus.
Thank you for joining us today. It will be great to see you at 11 if you can join us then for our regular Sunday morning Zoom chat and over a cup of coffee. And next Sunday's worship will again be at 10.30 on Facebook and YouTube. Please join me now in saying the grace on your screens. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, bye for now from the inside of our church and may God bless you. Have a great week.